Hello and welcome to another LAMP Bible Study. My name is James and I will continue to be your host and Bible reader for LAMP Bible Study. And we are currently in the book of Joshua. And so where we left off was Joshua was getting ready to go and go towards um, Jericho and actually had crossed the Jordan to Jericho. And so they're getting ready to march around Jericho. So let's get ready to uh, learn and understand more of the Lord's wisdom. Let's continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together. And I thank you very much for joining me. I'm currently reading out of NIV Collegiate Bible. So uh, thoughts for today. Hmm. It's been a another busy day, but not a whole lot has actually been on my mind. So this is going to be very interesting. So let's get started um, with Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of rams, ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up, every man straight in. So the Lord's showing them, he's showing them that he's going to uh, fight the battle for them. He's going to show his glory in front of all Israel. And he's giving them these precise directions to do and uh, in order to for all of this to happen, to have that faith as well. It's some could consider this another test. <clears throat> Will this new generation follow through? And so with that being said, uh, with what we just read, um, bringing it into today. So the past, the present and the future, the present, um, the president, this is talking about the Lord giving specific directions to Joshua for the Israelites to do. So in our lives, can we think of a time where we've been given specific directions? Can you think of a time that we've been, you've been given specific directions? So things that come to my mind <laughs> fairly quickly um, cooking, you know, um, you're giving specific measurements. Sometimes you can cook items and meals without really being precise, but sometimes you can't um, because it will affect something, whether it be flavor, whether it be texture, whether it be just the whole look of the food item. And so specific directions, also specific directions in a job. You know, for instance, uh, someone that operates a surgeon or someone who is um, of the law and has to follow the law specifically, such as a lawyer or a judge or any anywhere, any type of position that you've had where you've given been given specific instructions. Do you do them? Do you follow through and how carefully do you uh, pay attention to those instructions and how carefully do you actually follow them? We can also look at it in our life. So with uh, when it comes to um, the way, when it comes to following the way, which is when we pray or when we read the Bible or when we have our walk with God, does the Lord tell us to do something? Does the Lord tell you to do something or me? Does the Holy Spirit tell us to do something? Do we follow through? Do we actually do it? Do we listen? Do we listen for the instructions? Do we take note of all the instructions and then do we follow through? 
So there's many different ways to look just at these few verses that we started off with. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we go over these verses? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in the front of it. And he ordered the people, Advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the Ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the people, Do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout, then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the people returned to camp and spent the night there. Oh, uh, just, just think. Um, so, <clears throat> nation going to war against another nation, and the Lord's giving them specific instructions because he's going to show his glory. And he tells he does that sometimes, you know, he tells us to be prepared and be ready um, for a battle that he's already won, that he's already done for us. And also thinking about it, how would it feel or what it would look like to see a, like a, a group of people marching around your city, you know, and not saying anything. Um, but you see something that's they're carrying in front of them, and then you see trumpets blasting. How 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 would the people react to seeing that, knowing that those people were there because of what they've heard? What they heard, which was the Lord's getting ready to give them their, this land that they're currently on. And so um, I think it's, there's all kinds of thoughts and feelings here when it comes to how this battle's playing out. And it also goes to show that Joshua was telling them exactly what the Lord had commanded and the people were following through. Let's continue to read. Joshua got up early in the, uh, early the next morning, and the priests took up the Ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the Ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the Ark of the Lord, while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day... They got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priests sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only rehab, the prostitute, and all who were with her in her house shall be spared, because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted, devoted things, so that you will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So every man charged straight in, and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it, men and women, 
young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. Joshua said to the two men who had sp uh, spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young man who had done the spying went in and brought out wait, rehab, her father and mother and brothers and all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. So just a little uh, bit of backstory on the uh, previous Bible study. Um, Rahab was the woman that um, this hid the spies because she knew um, what she was hearing about the Lord's people, about Israel. And she believed. She had faith. She believed that that was going to happen. She knew. So that reminds me of several different things. Um, we, we never know who the Lord speaks to or how he speaks to them. So uh, I always hear this like, it's hard to say. So, you know, we ha it's difficult to explain. So to kind of just uh, pray about <laughs> how to explain this. So you have missionaries, right? And you have people who go out and spread the gospel. And then you have different ways of spreading the gospel, such as um, through online, through social media, through churches, etc. cetera. Um, but we never know how the Lord speaks to everybody individually, whether it's a contact, a physical contact, um, or a conversation, or by sight, or if, or if it's through dreams, or if it's through whatever other means. So in this case, Rahab, she knew of the Lord, and she believed. And so then she helped the two spies. And since she believed, she asked for her, basically she asked for her life. And she was awarded, as we see. Um, the two spies accepted her request to spare her. Not only that, but when the wall came tumbling down, Rahab lived in the wall. And we'll learn more about that as well. Rahab lived on, on that wall. Uh, the wall surrounding the city. And so the only place that stood was her her house. Everything else fell except for her and her family were safe. And so it shows you just how precise the Lord is. How the details, no matter how small they are, are important. And... It, it it says quite a bit. I mean, there's all kinds of things that come to my mind. My mind's just flooding. And so, but we don't know who has had reference to the Holy Spirit. So when it comes time for you to say something or speak up, still follow through because that person, the Holy Spirit may be already working on them and you just don't know. It hasn't been revealed to you or maybe it has. You know, we'll see later on that the Holy Spirit may have revealed it to someone and that's why they went someplace to talk to somebody or brought somebody there. So we'll learn, we'll learn about that too. So there's all kinds of different ways to think about this. Um, faith, deliverance, following through, um, even acknowledging the little things, the details. So the little things, another thing just flooded through my mind when it comes to detail. <laughs> detail, including the things that we humans say little, but nothing's little. Nothing's little. And so, because we think of it, uh, we have to think of it as in levels, and we have to put certain things into levels, like something that uh, a smile to somebody is uh, not as good as giving monetary funds to that person or some, you know, along those lines or, you know, thanking uh, somebody is not, or, or saying something's great and then stepping above it and saying it's wonderful. You know, there, it, there's levels to things that we humans do. And so when it comes to the small things, which are, again, are not small, everything's important. So 
let's say that where I'm going with this, uh, you're in public, and I know, in, uh, I I think we I mentioned this before, like, and because in some cultures it's um, not okay to look at somebody in the eyes, um, but you acknowledge the person, you can smile, you can wave, you can say hello, you can um, communicate. Those things can change somebody. You never know because it could be something that they're going through and some type of acknowledgement, some type of, some type of goodness, some something, even as little as of a smile can change somebody and can change their reaction or thought process which can make a huge difference. It can prevent things from happening. And so there, there's just a lot of lot to think about and a lot has flooded my mind, it still is. And there's things that I wanna say, but I'm not quite sure <laughs> if right now, I don't know if it's me or if I'm just, I don't know, but there's a lot to this and uh, this, this is, these are sermons, you know, in here. You could take this and run with it in so many different ways. This is the living word and it speaks. So with all of that and with reading these passages, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it, but they put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze, iron and, to, and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho and she lives among the Israelites to this day. Rahab's very important. Take note of her. <clears throat> because she's going to be brought up all throughout the Bible, including the New Testament, because she plays a very key role. At that time, Joshua pronounced this solemn oath. Cursed before the Lord is the man who undertakes to rebuild the city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, will he lay its foundations? At the cost of his youngest, will he set up its gates? Take note of this curse, too. Very interesting. So the Lord was with Joshua and his, uh, and his fame spread throughout the land. I mean, you have someone who listened to the Lord and he, not only did he lead the people and he told them what to do to cross the Jordan on dry land, you know, the Lord dried up the Jordan for them, the whole Israel to cross over to Jericho. Then they marched around the city and the city walls fell to the ground. And they were, e they easily overtook the city. So by word of mouth, that spread. And so all of that was probably terrifying to all the nations around because they knew that this was the time, that this was the time that Israel was coming to accept the, their, their promised land. Also, it was something that is saw, was seen and done by the current Israelites. And so it was something that they could see was a follow through and now rely on even more so. So they had faith. They did what they were told. They walked around the city seven times, or, you know, they walked around the city and then the trumpets blast and they shouted and the walls came tumbling down, just like the song. And uh, <laughs> the song I sang in the last Bible study. <laughs> and so now they're seeing that they have a living God. This generation is now seeing the wonders as well. And things that come to mind 
bringing the past to the present are, do we see wonders? Do you see wonders? Do I see wonders that happen? Do you hear about wonders that happen still to this day? I know I do. And I absolutely believe that wonders still happen. I believe the Lord sends his angels or the Lord does it himself. Reading these passages as well, and about how important um, this was, and how the Israelites listened to Joshua, and they devoted the silver, gold, bronze, and iron to the Lord's treasury. How does it make you feel, and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Uh, Atkins Sin, or Atchin Sin, it's a little dark. Atchin Sin, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if you know how to pronounce that, or if you know, <laughs> you could say it or put it in the comments. Uh, but the Israelites acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted things. Uh, Achan or Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Remember, oh, well, I haven't got to that part yet, but the tribe of Judah is very important. Someone in particular is going to come from that line. Um, so, and then, but... You know, there are humans and someone from the tribe at this time of Judah did, acted unfaithfully. And so, so the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Let's continue to read. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to, uh, to Ai, which is near Beth Evan, to the east of Bethel and told them, go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, not all the people will have to go up against Ai. Send two or 300 men to take it and do not weary all the people for only a few men are there. So about 300, uh, so about 3000 men went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted and became like water because the Lord was angry with them. Once again, they were not following the directions. Once again, they had not followed through. Once again, they were acting unfaithfully. It just shows you just how much we needed a savior because we can't, they just, we as humans, the law is a reflection and it shows us what, how, what it is to be holy. And unfortunately we fail and that's why we need a savior. That's why we need that's why we have Jesus. Then Joshua tore his clothes and uh, fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, "All sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Oh Lord, what can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this, and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? So, Joshua was upset. He was crying out. But he was also reminding the Lord that the you know the, they were his, his people, and so he's asking the Lord, you know, what 
what to do. And sometimes we can feel down, you know, sometimes we can feel, uh, one thing is people experience where they're feeling completely down, um, and, and what's called depression and where things tend to just not go away that they felt should have gone. Some of it is, uh, scientifically like chemical imbalances. Some of it is a way of thought process. And so, um, one thing definitely, definitely to rely on is God, to, to pray to Jesus. Um, and one thing that we know of that we have physically is the Holy Word, the Bible. And so this will, this will help this and having faith in it will help tremendously and having faith that there is a God and that he loves you no matter what. And, and is, and that things will be better. And so people, uh, one thing that when I hear, especially friends and such, uh, or people that I know, uh, or people that just tell me, um, that they suffer through a depression or they go through depression or they're currently suffering depression is, you know, I pray, I definitely always uh, give that depression to God. I always, 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 always do it. And I always tell them as well, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up on yourself because that's definitely what the devil's goal is. He wants us to give up. He wants once he likes those thoughts, those feelings, um, whether it be his little demons or whatever, uh, giving you those thoughts or feelings, um, he wants you to feel defeated because if you feel defeated, then you don't mind your life and therefore you don't mind spending, you could not, may not mind spending eternity in hell. And that is not what the Lord wants ever. And so one thing is for certain though, though, that the devil cannot take your salvation away ever. Once you have faith in the Lord, once you uh, ask Jesus into your heart, that can never be taken away. And that is a comfort that you always have. Even if you start going into depression, you can utilize that as strength as that hope, as that hope, at the, that light at the end of the tunnel. And so when it comes to this though, uh, when it comes to Joshua, he was utilizing how he felt and he was telling truth that they were brought up out of uh, Egypt and that they were, they did cross the Jordan he didn't necessarily mention Egypt here, but he, he was telling, he was saying that they crossed the Jordan to go into the promised land and now they're being routed. So let's continue to read and see what exactly um, happens. And before we continue to read though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind um, about what we just read uh, in modern day? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The Lord said to Joshua, stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things they have stolen, they have lied, they have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. Go consecrate the people, tell them, consecrate themselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, 
That which is devoted is among you, O Israel. You cannot stand against your enemies until you remove it. So this is back again in the law and under the law. And this shows us that time and time again, when us humans try to live under the law and to be completely holy, we fail. But it's not meaning that we're destined to fail. So I hear that too. It's like, oh, well, I'm alive, I'm a sinner, and I'm just going to sin and burn in hell. No, that's not, that's something that the devil wants. Absolutely, because he's already jealous. He's already jealous because he wants to be worshipped and he wants to be thought of as some, as he already knows where he's headed to. Anyways, he knows that the Lord's word is true, but he wants to take as many people with them. And so if you lose that opportunity, and that's not what the Lord wants, the Lord is not going to force us to accept his son. He will eventually, <laughs> you know, uh, if you did, did not, unfortunately, you will be going to eternity without him after acknowledging that he is the Lord. Um, he, the Lord wants us to be not only happy, but our cup overfloweth. He wants us to, he wants to provide overly abundantly for us. And he wants to spend eternity with us. And with that, he knew from the very beginning that in order to be holy, he needed to do something. He was going to have to do something. And so... By faith, uh, we trust in Jesus, who died for our sins. So that way, he that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. He did live up to the law. And uh, when it comes to today, I know that when my myself, when I'm off, when I'm off and I'm not, I know I'm not walking the way correctly, I tend to feel like things definitely happen to me quite immediately. <laughs> and I always think of the, the line um, that's in the Bible, you know, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. And I'm like, I do something and it happens to me immediately. Like I usually, you know, that's the way I feel sometimes. Sometimes, you know, it may not happen immediately. Things can't that go wrong or bad things can happen eventually. And it's not to say that we deserve bad things to happen to us because we're all sinners. No, but the Lord is righteous and the Lord knows he can he's justified to punish when he when he sees fit we are his children and it's better to not get punished but if you do have to get punished it's better just to get it <laughs> to, to it's 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 better not to get punished period <laughs> let's just let's just let's just go with that it's so therefore trying to uh, walk in the way and um, that's the best bet because being someone who believes we won't have eternal punishment that's what I was wanting to say is there's a difference between something that's punished here than eternal punishment and that's for not believing um, that Jesus is our savior so with all of that <laughs> <laughs> and even like what you know has things happened to you you know have you thought about something took an action take an action and you know either recognize sin or unrecognized sin and consequences happen or things happen you know you may have even thought it was something good good in a bad way and then something bad does happen 
you know, um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. In the morning, present yourselves tribe by tribe. The tribe that the Lord takes shall come forward clan by clan. The clan that the Lord takes shall come forward family by family. And the family that the Lord takes shall come forward uh, man by man. He who is caught with the devoted thing shall be destroyed by fire along with all that belongs to him. He has violated the covenant of the Lord and has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. Remember, this is under the law. The Lord was residing with them. Therefore, they had to be holy. They had to be kept holy. And these are the things under the law that had to be followed. Also, I'll say something in just a moment. Early, let's continue to read. The early, early the next morning, Joshua had Israel come forward by tribes and Judah was taken. The clans of Judah came forward and he took the Zerahites. He had the clan of Zerahites come forward by families and Zimri was taken. <laughs> Joshua had his family come forward by man by man and Achan, son of Cam Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken. Uh, quick pause. So, again, back then, they had they fully relied on the Lord, fully. And we need to do so to, to this day and have that faith. Um, we, though, have other things, um, <laughs> like those things, like, like those judge shows, Those the, that was coming through my mind uh, while reading this, that we have, you know, we have those judge shows and... Um, where you have the plaintiff and you have the defendant. <laughs> um, but you also have investigations, you know, before it gets to that, you have investigations, uh, whether it be police or police, police and detectives and you name it, you know, um, camera footage and such. We, we use quite a bit nowadays uh, to determine culprits, you know, to determine who broke the law or who did something wrong. Uh, whereas back then, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have cameras and all that good, you know, all the other stuff <laughs> that we have today, um, which and it shows you that the people fully relied on the Lord. It says a lot here. I mean, when you think about it, yeah, we have conveniencies. Do those conveniencies pull us away in some ways from trust in the Lord? Do we give thanks for those? You have a cell phone. Have you ever thought about giving praise for having a cell phone? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of ways to look at this. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Also about those detective shows. <laughs> you know, they're interesting. You know, you watch them. <laughs> One cartoon <laughs> from a long time ago, I remember Inspector Gadget. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. And there's other, um, there's other um, inspect, uh, inspection, you know, uh, what is it, Matlock or some other, you know, there's all kinds of shows, detective shows and this and that, you know, so it's always, it's, and it's always interesting how they find and piece together puzzles and such. Um, one that went um, off a little while ago was, I think it was called Psych, I think it was called, the, the TV show series that was on a network, um, and it ran for a little while, and it was kind of interesting because the person knew how he was a he was a person that could visual see things and and create an image of that in his mind so he could he could real he could like re re um, rethink of things fairly easily from what he saw um in an accurate manner so 
Um, but anyways, all those, that's, we have, you know, all that creative stuff today. And they may have thought of different things. Um, however, this shows us what, it li what it's like to fully rely on the Lord and to have that kind of reliance on the Lord that the Lord will reveal who was the culprit in this situation. Let's continue to read. Um, then Joshua said to Achan, or Achan, my son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give him the praise. Tell me what you have done. Do not hide it from me. Achan replied, it is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent and there it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. They took the things from the tent, brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites and spread them out before the Lord. Then Joshua, together with all Israel, took Achan, son of Zerah, the silver, the robe, the gold wedge, his sons and daughters, his cattle, donkeys and sheep, his tent and all that he had to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, why have you brought this trouble on us? The Lord will bring trouble on you today. Then all Israel stoned him, and after they had stoned the rest, they burned them. Over Achan, they heaped up a large pile of rocks, which remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his fierce anger. Therefore, that place has been called the Valley of Achor ever since. And so that is because, once again, we're talking, we're in the Old Testament, and Joshua's leader. God is residing with his people, Israel, and they have to, they must remain holy. They must remain holy with the Lord. And the wages of sin is death, period, no matter what. And oh, I, oh, I just got in another like conversation with somebody about that because we as humans, and I bring this up all the time, <laughs> I bring this up all the time. We as humans, we have to, ha we have levels. We have a few rob you get you know time in jail if you uh, hit and run you get more time in jail if you plot and kill somebody you get you may even get life in jail or even a capital punishment and it goes around the world different types of punishment for different levels of wrongdoing and so when it comes to wrongdoing we as humans we see it in levels punishments uh, with the crime. And even in the Old Testament, that, you know, when it comes down to it, it may have came from the law, the law, part of the law, you know, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, some of it, um, not all. It just depends. It varies by uh, each, uh, you know, civilization or, you know, each um, community. And so, but we think of sin, we don't think of it the same as the Lord. Of course not. You know, his thoughts are not our thoughts. He's holy. Um, so we have to ask for understanding. And But it says throughout the Bible, sin is sin. The wages of sin is death. Every single sin. A wrong thought is the same. It's the, a wrong thought, like an evil thought, an evil intent is the same sin as murder, as same sin as uh, uh, same sin as anything uh, from the Ten Commandments, adultery, etc. Idol worship, it's, the, it's everything's the same when it comes to sin. God can't be around it at all. 
not oh it's just a little i just i i i, I did this little tiny thing it was just, it didn't really have any uh, significance or any type of uh, major consequence it's the same it's the same you can't be around it sin it's not holy it deserves death it deserves to burn it deserves eternal death so he the lord knew that already and so that's why he had to send the savior that's why he had to send his son so that when we believe in his son and we ask his uh, for Jesus to come into our heart when he sees us because not only did he make us in his own image but he also sent his son right and then we accept him he sees he sees the son in us he sees his son in us who lived by the law and forgives us of our sins and that just shows us how once again, how the law was in the Old Testament. So bringing um, that to today, we no longer live under law. The law, however, isn't something to just throw away. You know, we're, it's showing you what it is to be holy. It is showing you and I what it is to be holy and that understanding and how to do good, to love your neighbor for... Uh, as yourself and to love the Lord and we're going to learn more and more about that as we continue to read so I just thought to bring that up again once again um, because sin there's no levels to sin <laughs> there might be in video games <laughs> but once again that has, that, that's not the, you know that's <laughs> it's not a spiritual walk it's maybe fun but, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not it's not it may not be necessarily how we look at it as humans you know we have different punishments for different crimes so however all sin is the same when it comes to the lord uh, more wisdom let's can uh, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think Let's continue to read. At or I destroyed. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack I. For I have delivered into your hands the king of I, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to I and its king as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. So remember, Jericho was first city. Or it's a repeated thing. He wants you to provide him the glory first. Think about that in your life. So you get a good, great job. What do you do? Do you celebrate? You're like, oh my gosh, I got an awesome job. I got, I got this money. Or you get something. You, you, oh, I did it. Where's the Lord in that? Uh, I know. I know. I'm a sinner, the least of all, trust and believe. <laughs> Chocolate cake. <laughs> and then, and then like, it's gone, right? And I'm like, oh God, did I pray? Did I even, did I pray? Oh my God, I didn't pray. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's a little late, but I mean, you know, sometimes some people say, you know, late than never, you know, better late than never. <laughs> but things, things to think about. Things to think about. I'm right here. He's telling them, okay, this next city, all for you. So uh, let's continue to read. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack I. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and sent them out at night. With, three or the, with these orders, listen carefully, you are not to set an ambush behind the city. Don't go very far from it. All of you be on the alert. 
I and all those with me will advance on the city, and when the men come out against us, as they did before, we will flee from them. They will pursue us until we have lured them away from the city, for they will say, they are running away from us as they did before. So when we flee from them, you are to rise up from the from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give it to give it into your hand. When you have taken the city, set it on fire. Do what the Lord has commanded. See to it. You have my orders. <clears throat> okay. So let's see if they do it this time. Then Joshua sent them off. And they went to the place of ambush and lay in wait between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai. But Joshua spent the, that night with the people. Early the next morning, Joshua mustered his men, and he and the leaders of Israel marched before them to Ai. The entire force that was with him marched up and approached the city and arrived in front of it. They set up camp north of Ai, with the valley between them and the city. Joshua had taken about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai, to the west of the city. They had the soldiers take up their positions, all those in the camp to the north of the city, and the ambush to the west of it. That night, Joshua went into the valley. <clears throat> when the king of Ai saw this, he and all the men of the city hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle at uh, a place uh, at a certain place overlooking the Arabah, but he did not know that an ambush had been set against him behind the, behind the city. Joshua and all Israel let themselves be driven back before them, and they fled toward the desert. All the men of Ai were called to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and were her, uh, lured away from the city. Not a man remained in Ai or Bethel who did not go after Israel. They left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Hold out toward I, the javelin that is in your hand. For into your hand I will deliver the city. So Joshua held out his javelin toward I. As soon as he did this, the men in the ambush rose quickly from their position and rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it and quickly set it on fire. It's one of those things that could have things happen without maybe, but the Lord's doing it under direction and it's also for the people to see there's representation there and it's all necessary and all needed. <clears throat> it also gives encouragement, you know, what Joshua did, sh you know, show doing the spear you know, and sh holding it out and it's giving them that sign. There's a lot to this, you know, um, reading this, you know, have you ever been in a situation where we you were waiting for someone's signal? So you could start whatever your work or a process or something. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The men of Ai looked back and saw the smoke of the city rising against the sky. But they had no chance to escape in any direction, for the Israelites who had been fleeing toward the desert had turned back against their pursuers. For when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city and that smoke was going up from the city, they turned around and attacked the men of Ai. The men of the ambush also came out of the city against them, so that they were caught in the middle. With Israelites on both sides, Israel cut them down, leaving them neither survivors nor fugitives. But they took the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. Wow. <clears throat> Complete defeat of Ai. When Israel had finished killing all the men of Ai in the fields and in the desert uh, where they had chased them, and when every one of them had been put to the sword, all the Israelites returned to Ai and killed those who were in it. 12,000 men and women fell that day. All the people of Ai, um, for Joshua did not draw back the hand that held out his javelin until he had destroyed all who lived in Ai. But Israel did carry off for themselves the livestock and plunder of this city as the Lord had instructed Joshua. 
that was a long time. Oh, I don't know how long it is, but it was probably some time because they defeated them and then he continued to hold out that that uh, spear in his hand, javelin in his hand, and he held it out the whole time. So, mm, wow, it says a lot. So Joshua burned I and made it a permanent a heap of ruins, a desolate place to this day. He hung the king of Ai on a tree and left him there until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered them to take his body from the tree and throw it at, down at the entrance of the city gate, and they raised a large pile of rocks over it, which remains to this day. So, oh, man, and they hung, they hung the king. Wow. Just a lot there. And that has to do with the curse of uh, leaving a body to hang um, under the, and more guidance and such from during the law. Um, so just over that, the people did exactly what the Lord had told them to do. So they had victory and they routed the people of I. <clears throat> So they went from being punished because someone, part of Israel, was defying the covenant and going against what the Lord had said. And then they got rid of that. They corrected themselves. They consecrated themselves. They went to, did exactly what the Lord told them to do, were able to go to battle, rout I, completely destroy it, and were able to take the plunder for themselves. Reading these passages, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? It looks like we may go over today. <laughs> the covenant renewed at Mount Ebal. Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites. He built it according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones on which no iron tool had been used on it. They offered to the Lord burnt offerings and sacrifice fellowship offerings. There in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua copied on stones the law of Moses, which he had written. All Israel, aliens and citizens alike, with their elders, officials and judges, were standing on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, facing those who carried it the priests who were Levites. Half of the people stood in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had formally commanded when he gave instructions to bless the people of Israel. Remember half the tribe or half the people went over to one of the mount, the other ones went to mouth, uh, the other mount, uh, half said blessings, half said cursings. <clears throat> Another representation basically of what uh, Joshua's um, trying to uh, replicating. After Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it is written in the book of the law, there was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and children and the aliens who lived among them. And that's always important because there were aliens living among them. There were other people from other tribes and other nations and such, not tribes, other nations and such that believed and started to follow the way and following um, the Lord. And so um, with that, with what we just read, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? And for instance, uh, Again, bringing past and the present, the read the law and uh, the blessings and the cursings, and we know that every single human won't be won't is not able to stand up to the law, and so that's why we needed the Lord. We needed a Savior, which is Jesus. And um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind reading these passages about the success of Israel? Um, and your success. How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? When you are following the way, because all good things come, come from above, so you are following the way. When you ever have that doubt, just look back and think, 
has th- have things been good? Think about those things. Let's continue to read. The Gibeonite, Gibeonite deception. Oh boy. Now when all the kings west of the Jordan heard about these things, those in the hill country, in the western foothills, and along the entire coast of the great sea as far as Lebanon, the kings of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, they came together to make war against Joshua and Israel. However, when the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, they resorted to a ruse. <clears throat> They went as a delegation whose donkeys were loaded with worn out sacks and old wineskins, cracked and mended. The men put worn and patched sandals on their feet and wore old clothes. All the bread of their food supply was dry and moldy. Then they went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and the men of Israel, we have come from a distant country, make a treaty with us. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, but perhaps you live near us. How then can we make a treaty with you? We are your servants, they said to Joshua. But Joshua asked, who are you and where do you come from? You know, these are good questions, right? Mm, Something's fishy. Uh, Let's continue. Uh, They answered, Your servants have come from a very distant country because of the fame of the Lord your God. I'm still being vague. For we have heard reports of him, all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, Sihon king of Heshbon and Og king of Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth. And our elders and all those living in our country said to us, take uh, provisions for your journey. Go and meet them and say to them, we are your servants. Make a treaty with us. This bread of ours was warm when we packed it at home on the day we left to come to you. Hmm. But now see how dry and moldy it is. And these wineskins that we filled were new. But now how... But see how cracked they are, and our clothes and sandals are worn out by the very long journey. The men of Israel sampled their provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. Let's, I'm going to read that again. Because the men of Israel sampled their provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. There's the issue. There's the issue. Then Joshua made a treaty of of peace with them to let them live, and the leaders of the assembly ratified it by oath. Remember, before they took, they were told not to make treaties, not to make peace with these people, to go completely wipe all these people out. And here we go. The Gibeonites deceived Israel. Not only Israel, but they deceived Joshua. And the men of Israel did not inquire of the Lord. The Lord was there with them, but they just made a human decision. Do we do that? Do you do that? Do I do that? I'm guilty. Sometimes I I make stupid decisions without even praying about it and or sometimes when I think about it I'm like oh god I pray that this was it's too late I already made the decision I pray that it goes okay time and time again the Lord always says seek him first <sighs> here we go you know so we're gonna find out just how the consequences of this action what happens now and we don't like consequences we as humans we don't like consequences we don't like to be punished but unfortunately we have to take accountability and acceptance so what kind of thoughts and feelings come to your mind i know this is this can be hard this can be difficult and uh, especially when things go bad 
sometimes it's not our fault. Sometimes it's not something that we did, but in a lot in circumstances it is. In in other circumstances it 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 is. So not everything, but in some circumstances, when bad things happen or negative things happen, it it's something that we may have did or were a part of. So we have to accept those consequences. And we have and the best way to accept them is just to give it to the Lord and and not remember to thank him, <laughs> you know, thank him, uh, but also, you know, tell him, please be with me, protect me. You know, I understand that the th things may be bad, but show me the light, you know, show me the air of my ways, giving it back. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Three days after they made the treaty with the Gibeonites, the Israelites heard that they were neighbors living near them. So the Israelites set out on the third day, came to their cities, Gibeon, Kephara, or Kephara, Beeroth, and Kirith Jerim. But the Israelites did not attack them because the leaders of the assembly had sworn an oath to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. I remember the Lord said, if you don't do this, if you don't go and destroy them, they're going to be thorns and thistles among you. The, uh, the whole assembly grumbled against the leaders, but all the leaders answered, we have given them our oath by the Lord, the God of Israel, and we cannot touch them now. This is what we will do to them. We will let them live so that wrath will not fall on us for breaking the oath we swore to them. They continued, let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers for the entire community. So the leaders promise to them, so the leaders promise to them was kept. Then Joshua summoned the Gibeonites and said, why did you deceive us by saying we live a long way from you while actually you live near us? You are now under a curse. You will never cease to serve as woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. They answered Joshua, your servants were clearly told how the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses and to give uh, you the whole land and to wipe out all the inhabitants from before you. So we feared for our lives because of you, and that is why we did this. We are now in your hands. Do to us whatever seems good and right to you. The question is, did that curse come from man, Joshua, or did it come from God? We'll find out because, remember, whoever they didn't destroy becomes thorns and thistles to the Israelites. And <sighs> These people had their own way. They didn't worship God. They worshiped their own gods. That's the truth. So yeah, they feared Israel because their God was doing things. Um, just a lot here, you know, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? I know when today people feel, and they always have, it's, I mean, throughout the Bible, where they feel walking in the way or uh, Christianity as a whole is being attacked. Okay. Well, what do you do? It says to be faithful, to continue to walk in the way. There will always be things that come against you. There will always be people who don't believe in Christianity. Everybody has the right to hear the word, though. Everybody has the right to um, have the Gospels spoke, you know, the Holy Spirit communicate to them. But it's each individual person, um, God gave, gave them the right to choose, just like he gave you and I. So we lean on the Lord, though. That's where our hope is. Um... Let's continue to read. 
So Joshua saved them from the Israelites, and they did not kill them. That day he made the Gibeonites woodcutters and water carriers for the community and for the altar of the Lord at the place the Lord would choose. And that is what they are to this day. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind reading these passages? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? For me, it's just reassurance and reaffirming that we need Jesus. <laughs> the sun, uh, let's continue to read. The sun stands still. That's amazing. Now, Adon Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it, doing to Ai and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king. And that the people of Gibeon had made a treaty of peace with Israel and were living near them. He and his people were very much alarmed at this because Gibeon was an important city. Like one of the royal cities, it was larger than I, and all its men were good fighters. So Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, appealed to Hoham, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jer Jarmuth, Japhai, king of Lashish, and Debir, king of Eglon, come up and help me attack Gibeon, he said, because it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Emrites, the king of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lashish, and Eglon, joined forces. They moved up with all their troops and took up positions against Gibeon and attacked it. The Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal, do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us, because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. Has already begun. A thorn in the side. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighters, fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After all... After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road, going up to Beth Haran, and cut them down all the way to Azekah and Makeda. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Haran to Az. Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them from the sky, and more of them died from the hailstones than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. Take note. The Lord does the battles for us over and over again. On, that, on the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O sun, stand still over Gibeon. O moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Joshua, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There, was ne there has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a man Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Amen. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp of Gilgal. So you're walking in the way. You ask things from God that, God, that we have a living God, the Lord our Savior. You ask and you shall receive. Have that faith. Anything of the, that you ask for, that's following in the way, you will receive. <laughs> that anything you ask for, think about that. Because Jesus is going to say it over and over. He's like, if you have faith, you can tell this mountain to move over from here to there, and it'll happen. That power comes from God, from the Lord. And think about it today. You're like, well, 
I don't see many mountains moving today. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> Say us, tell us a lot about faith these days. Is it necessary though? Is it always necessary for something? For a man wanting to have something so he can visualize it, so he can see it? So you got to think about that too. Having faith in the Lord provides actions, provides things for us changes things makes things that may naturally happen a person falls off a ledge a hundred foot ledge they survived how you know it makes you think it makes you think and that's what it's supposed to do that's just what the word is supposed to do so reading that the sun was delayed. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a man. So Joshua too had faith. He brought his request to God and God answered and provided once again. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Five Amorite kings killed. Now the five kings had fled and hidden in the cave of Mechadah, or at Mechadah, when Joshua was told that the five kings had been found hiding in the cave of Mechadah, if you know how to pronounce it. <laughs> uh, he said, roll large rocks up to the mouth of the cave and post some men there to guard it. But don't stop. Pursue your enemies, attack them from the rear, and don't let them reach their cities. For the Lord your God has given them into your hand. So Joshua and the Israelites destroyed them completely. Almost to a man, almost to a man, but the few who were left reached their fortified cities. The whole army then returned safely to Joshua in the camp of at Makedah, and no one uttered a word against the Israelites. Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me. So they brought the five kings out of the cave, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmoth, Lashish, and Eglon. When they had brought these kings to Joshua, he summoned all the men of Israel and said to the army commanders who had come with him, come here and put your feet on the necks of these kings. So they came forward and placed their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, be strong and courageous. This is what the Lord will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. Then Joshua struck and killed the kings and hung them on five trees, and they were left hanging on the trees until evening. I want to pause because there's a lot here. A lot. So this is also something that the Lord talks about when it comes to... Um, this is also another thing that Bible scholars and priests and... and, and and um, pastors and such go to because this is also according to where we'll read in the New Testament um, a sign of how it's going to be um, for Jesus. Jesus is going to put or to place his foot on the neck of the man. How is it said? It's the devil foot will be placed on the neck and it was even at the snake like there's so much representation here when it comes to how things will be eventually and how Satan will be defeated how sin will be defeated and that's there's a lot that um, shows just in these verses representations of that um, and so this is kind of like a prophecy as well, 
would be a prophecy as well. So he's not just talking about Israel right then and there. He's talking about Israel. He's talking about the future. And he may not know it, or he may not be thinking about that, or maybe he is, but he's proclaiming it. And these are signs and wonders that will happen. And he's also saying things that God tells us all the time. Do not be afraid. Uh, the Lord says this over and over again to us. Do not be discouraged. The Lord says this over and over to us. Be strong and courageous. The Lord says this over and over to us. Um, and so he's showing them a visual, visual representation of what the Lord will do to all Israel's enemies. Then Joshua struck and killed the kings. Okay. So you have the past, present, and the future. So we have the past. We also have imagery of the future, present. When we are walking in the way, when we are with the Lord, people may try to come against you. And we are not to have the fear. We're to be, do not, we're not to be afraid. We're to be, we're not to be discouraged either. And we're to be strong and courageous, um, proclaiming the word, proclaiming the gospel. And that will help us no matter what, because we have a living God that's fighting for us, that's for that's doing things for us. And we're not to think about how things may um, happen or occur, because when you're walking in the way, things will happen how they're supposed to happen. And so um, you, you may end up in a place where there's someone who persecutes you for your belief in the way. And that may be difficult, but it also, we won't continue to read and find out what actually it will be for you. I'll give you a hint. It's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing so um, but again people they mix their own thoughts and feelings into it and they like well I am doing this and I am but with other people especially other people walking the way have those doubts there's a reason for it so go together go together with other people people and ask and pray about it because if it's correct it, it will be correct for the Lord loves all of us every single one of even the person that is persecuting you because you could be that opportunity for them to understand what the Lord's been trying to tell them this whole time Take those opportunities and chances because it's not what you always think. A lot of people up there thinking that, oh, you gotta, you gotta have to do something and the Lord's already doing it for you. All you gotta do is be there and say what the Holy Spirit is leading you to say. There's a lot here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when you read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. That day Joshua took Mechada. He put the city and its king, king to the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it. He left no survivors and he did to the king of Mechada as he, did, as he had done to the king of Jericho. Southern cities conquered. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Mechada to Libna and attacked it. The Lord also gave that city and its king into Israel's hand. The city and everyone in it Joshua put to the sword. He left no survivors there and he did to its king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Libna to Lashish. He took a position against it and attacked it. The Lord handed Lashish over to Israel, and Joshua took it on the second day. The city and everyone in it he put to the sword. 
just as he had done to Libna. Meanwhile, Horam, king of Gizar, had come up to help Lachish, but Joshua defeated him and his army until no survivors were left. So the Lord, they're following the Lord, the Lord's working for, with, with them, for them, and they're able to defeat these um, kings in these cities to continue to take the promised land. Then Joshua and all Israel with him moved on from Lachish to Eglon. They took up position against it and attacked it. They captured it the sa that same day and put it to the sword and totally destroyed everyone in it, just as they had done to Lachish. Then Joshua and all Israel with him went up from Eglon to Hebron and attacked it. They took the city and put it to the sword, together with its king, its villages, and everyone in it. They left no survivors. Just as Egl just at Eglon, they totally destroyed it and everyone in it. Just as at Eglon. Okay. Then Joshua and all Israel with him turned around and attacked Debir. They took the city, its king, and its villages and put them to the sword. Everyone in it that they totally destroyed. They left no survivors. They did to Debir and its king as they had done to Libna and its king and to Hebron. So Joshua subdued the whole region, including the hill country, the Negev, the western foothills, and the mountain slopes together with all their kings. He left no survivors. He totally destroyed all who breathed, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded. Joshua subdued them from Kadesh Barnea to Gaza and from the whole region of Goshen to Gibeon. All these kings and their lands Joshua conquered in one campaign because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp of Gil at Gilgal. So, again, this is during the um, Old Testament under the law. This is uh, the all those uh, places in Canaan, all the communities of Canaan and all the king kingdoms and such were under punishment because they did it all the detestable acts and they refused to accept God and so um, the Lord was utilizing Israel he had already chosen to provide Israel with the promised land and he was um, giving Israel the promised land uh, whereas Israel justified to have it it was not as the Lord had said he gave it as a promise they were already they had already sinned you know starting out they had uh, somebody already took stuff that was supposed to be of God of the Lord possession when that was supposed to be devoted to the Lord and took it for himself as you can see so it goes to show us that we need we needed a savior and so um, having trust and faith in the Lord um, is what we need and so let's do a quick review because I know it was long today. Our study was long today and that's okay. We went through the fall of Jericho. Joshua won that battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. <laughs> Amen to that. And then remember Rahab. Rahab was uh, saved from, um, from the um, uh, Jericho falling and all the people... Um, being put to the sword and then remember Achan or Achan's sin what we just literally talked about and how he took from the Lord what was supposed to be devoted and what his just punishment was we talked about I and how it was destroyed but at first it wasn't destroyed because um, Achan um, and so when they tried to take it at first they couldn't but then once they got rid of the person uh, that was standing among them and going against the Lord, then they were able to go and route I. And they continued. They continued to route um, the different kingdoms. The, uh, they renewed the covenant um, at Mount Evil, similar to what Moses had done with Israel. Um, then, unfortunately, the Gibeonites came and deceived them who lived in Canaan. And instead of going to the Lord, they made a 
their own justifying decision. So we'll get to that too, because we'll talk about the Pharisees and the Sadducees when we get to the New Testament and how there's something of that today. <sighs> when man puts his own thoughts and feelings and justifications before the Lord or on the Lord's level, <sighs> so, and immediately they start being thorns. So, but the Lord was still with Israel. They were able to rout the five kings that came up against them and which in turn helped the Gibeonites at the same time. Then they, con um, Israel conquered the Southern cities. With all of that, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? Uh, how does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Thank you again for joining me on another Lamp Bible Study. My name is James and I will continue to be the host and Bible reader of Lamp Bible Study every Tuesday and Thursday. I always it, very excited. Can't wait for another Tuesday and Thursday so I can do another Lamp Bible Study. I will try to eventually do some live Bible studies. What do you think? You can leave a comment and such. Um, I always have recorded ones, but um, I want to maybe do some live ones, you know, and do some uh, live questions and such as we go through each of these Bible studies. So I'll think about it. We'll see. <laughs> I also do have more flashlights coming on. <laughs> And, you know, continue to pray for me. I always will continue to pray for you. And um, I pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom and his holy word together. Wherever there's two or more, there he is. There he will be. Or he says, there I am. And that is almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, with that, if you have any questions or comments, always feel free to leave comments in the comment section and there's always a contact as well as an Instagram page and that will do it for today's Lamp Bible study wherever you are have a blessed morning a blessed day a blessed afternoon a blessed evening and a blessed night God bless <laughs>